I think it's fair to say that as social beings, we're preconditioned by our family, our school, our background, and we start to compartmentalize everything as good or bad or right or wrong. But somewhere along life, experiences play out and we start to begin to question what lies beyond the box. Now, playing by the rules has its own perks because it's certainly more convenient to live within structured chaos. And we've heard of the famous saying by Shakespeare that says, uh, all worlds a stage and all men and women are mere players. And there's no shame in living that part of yourself, but we have to be really clear that in doing so, we define ourselves as the doer. In order to transition as a seeker, one has to get off the stage and become a mere spectator. Our guest today is someone who has not just jumped off the stage, but has rescripted and redirected the narrative. So without further ado, I'm super excited to welcome a very special friend and coach, Manjinder Sidhu, popularly known as Manny. And I like to call him the man with many missions. Welcome, Manny, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Such a big um, introduction. And I wrote down two things, well, three things during the introduction. The thing you mentioned about um, good and bad, it's like a binary sort of system, which is about judgment, right? And you talked about being a doer, but I'm like, we need to be more beers. We need to be rather than do mm. more so. But yeah, but thank you. Nice to have, nice to be here today. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Manny, you know what? I've been researching on this very controversial spiritual topic for some time now called the Twin Flames. And uh, I stumbled upon your podcasts. I really resonated with your energy and your transparency and vulnerability was shockingly refreshing. I'm not sure the world is ready for you just yet, but uh, you've smashed way too many templates. So give us a little background about who Manny really is and where you really come from. Yeah, and why controversial with the Twin Flame stuff? You know, there's just, there is a lot of information out there. There's some really good YouTubers and really good social media people that are out there. They are. I think my method of delivery is slightly different. It's almost like a story or poetic. Sometimes it attacks a lot of the divine masculines. It's funny. I, I laugh. But um, what you want to know? You want to know about me? So I'm just someone who sits on my bedroom floor and creates content. Um, but my background is I come from a Sikh Punjabi family of immigrants who migrated to the UK from the village in Punjab. So from, you know, the background is not as educated for my parents' generation. And then they come to the UK and quite often with immigrants who are not from like educated big city backgrounds, they look around and they say, oh, look at the look at the white people. They're doing these things. So they're very strict, very traditional, more so. And I find often the immigrant uh, families from before, they, they're back, more behind than people in India now because they held on to India 50 years ago. So it's like, don't go out, don't do this. I remember when I was young, like I, I said to my mom once, like, I want to go to the cinema uh, with my friends. And she's like, why do you want to go with your friends for? Go by yourself. Because my mom has these things that she doesn't trust people, right? And this is very interesting because we're talking about the Twin Flame journey and how all these like sort of programs and paradigms of how we've been conditioned socially come into play. And Twin Flames are those that kind of break those, those templates because they're usually polar opposites. But I grew up as a boy in quite a traumatized family background, lots of arguing, fighting, the typical sort of Punjabi sort of family, you could say, patriarchal, women must be submissive and listen, the man's in charge, otherwise there's, there's arguments. And that was quite challenging for someone who is perhaps an old soul, because growing up, I was always called um, like Baba, which is like old man, right? Even though a small little child, and I was very interested in mythology, Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, the gurus, uh, Christianity, I was interested in gods and goddesses and, and um, superheroes because I felt like they were true and they existed. So as a small kid, I would be praying for hours and hours and hours and I wanted to bring peace. I was like a UN peacekeeper in my family saying, you know, can you grow up? Because like, you're not like, acting like children. You're so stupid. 
and childish the way they were arguing all the time um so that's that's how I was as a kid but I also was a kid who was kind of um a little bit feminine because I'm gay I didn't know that until I was like in my teenage years but I would like to dress up I dress up a lot as like old women like grandmas with a tea towel and I have like <laughs> pictures and videos when I was a kid I have like a pretend walking stick and then my dad used to love making my dad like loved taking pictures very interesting because there's a lot of mirroring between my dad and my twin flame my twin flame is a photographer and also sometimes looks similar to my dad at times which is weird but not always um but my dad loved taking pictures of us loved to video us and so I used to love to act and play and be a lot out in out in public right but that's when people started judging me and start my family themselves were not my parents were good but they started judging me and saying you know he's feminine or you know what's wrong with him and that's when I retreated mm -hmm. and I became more insular and my twin flame triggers that out of me with his femininity and masculinity and his nudity because I had a thing well I grew up and my family were quite open but I had issues my own issues with my sexuality with my nudity with um judgment and people living in a society I was quite conservative because the Indians around us here in the UK they've been here for like 50 60 years or whatever and they're quite traditional you know, Barry, it's, um, it's not surprising that when you say that you went into a sort of a cocoon because you came into your own identity and you didn't feel accepted. Because I feel like when you're on this journey, it's very common to have that kind of an upbringing or a childhood, which is going to fall out of the norms. And I think vulnerability or to be vulnerable is something that is a lesson we learn once we come on to this journey because you have no option and your prior life experiences have given you enough reason not to be yourself. And that was the question I wanted to ask you is that you have been recognized as a best-selling author for your book, Bollywood Gay, right? Uh, how was the journey for you? And how did that become an inspiration for you to literally bear the torch for so many others? Yeah, it's interesting because you talked about vulnerability is like a sort of given on the journey. But I think that's for the divine feminines because the divine masculine do not want to be vulnerable. And that's why they run because they're really scared of it. So for me, the whole thing about how I started doing the activism from being that sheltered person, you know, from doing the being an old grandma in front of video cameras and then going within. It took a lot because um, I had to leave the area I grew up in. So. I grew up in um, Birmingham, uh, which is in the middle of the UK and in an area which is called a lot of Indians live here. And I knew that I couldn't be myself here. Right. Especially because, like I said, I grew up in this crazy household and arguments, fighting and the extended family, very patriarchal, very masculine, very like you got to be this way. And from a young age, my mom was like, when your wife comes and you have your grandkids, like when I was like 12, like I was, you know, all this stuff was bred into my head so I was like I need to go away and the only thing I saw as an escape was I had to get a good job and a career because hmm. I, I I knew I, in my heart I thought I was going to be disowned I was going to be either forced to marry a woman or to be killed something bad happened so I need to like have an escape plan so I decided to go to London for university I got really good grades I studied I really worked hard um to get all the A's and go to university and so that was one thing moving outside of my my city my town my area going away to london that helped me see a bigger world but that wasn't enough i had to move further i got i started working in human rights so the un and i moved to the middle east i moved to europe i moved to asia then i saw suffering i saw people who had it far worse than me okay and I think when you get out of your own comfort, like you live in America, when you go to other places, you see that the world is bigger than the box you're in. And then I would return back to come back to see my family and I would see people who I knew from school or people who I maybe had dated and they were, you know, gay, but they were marrying women because the society, they were Indian and all they were being forced. And I thought, you know what? No. So 
the first thing that happened to me was I contacted, um, obviously I came out to my family and that was a, a drama in itself. Well, it wasn't that much of a drama, but it was, it was better than expected. It was more of an extended family drama. But um, I contacted Punjab Radio and I emailed them and they, did, uh, they didn't follow practice very well. I said, I asked them, they should do a show about, you know, gay people, but they should get doctors, scientists, psychologists, a panel and do it properly. I didn't give them permission to say my name. So I was working for the, uh, I was working for the Tibetan government in India, I think. And my mom phones me and she says, they're saying your name on the radio for some reason. I'm like, what? Like, why are they saying my name for? They want to do a show about this and that and the other and what's going on. So they decided to say my name on Punjab radio without having doctors and other specialists there to have a discussion to say, you know, we have a call with uh, someone who emailed us and he wants to talk about this topic because he is this and that and the other. So basically they announced my homosexuality to the whole, to whole, all my cousins heard it, my uncles, aunties, and they were like, why is he on the radio? He's giving us a, a bad name and all this and that and the other. So it was taken out of my hands in that sense because I wanted to do a show, but it was done without the right uh, media sensibilities because you know what them outing me could have had me killed right that wasn't sensitive it could have given me a psychotic breakdown and sorry so how long that. back are we, sorry how long back are we talking about this i think i was around 20 maybe 24 something like that i'm 37 now so it was a long time ago and then i worked for the Sikh channel in the uk and then they were contacted by sky news tv who wanted to find out about like uh, if they knew anyone who was Indian and gay about some some news report and I was going as just a, like a person who was just regular like I wasn't going to be outed right but Sky News also outed me without my permission and that's a that's a western media channel I was on the TV and they said okay and this is Manjinder Sidhu and he's gay and I get, did not give permission to to say that right my parents didn't want me to do that so I got outed by two tv and media outlets without permission I mean ideally I could have actually sued them probably but I feel like sometimes God works in mysterious ways and I was pushed into that lifestyle of being out I was outed yeah yeah which is so great because like you always say maybe the soul orchestrated this for you right to just be able to make sure that you announce and uh you know, it's it's amazing. So quite a riot you've been, right, Manny? Has that that's probably yes. a few on the journey, <laughs> the door, right? So, uh, and this is where it gets nosy. I get a little personal, but I do want to know: Were you like traditionally married as well before you went on to realizing and experiencing your twin flame journey? And how did that come about? Oh no, no, I've never been married. Never been married. I've always like known from a young age that there was the one out there, and I've been in a few relationships which I sabotaged because I knew they weren't the one. And um, I always knew that the one was, I, I always had an idea and I feel like Twin Flame's always given this image of who their Twin Flame is. So I always knew like six foot two, three, white, muscular, you know, brownish, blondish hair, green eyes, blah, blah. And Mediterranean. I always knew my partner was somewhere in the Mediterranean. And lo and behold, there you go, it was. So no, I wasn't married, but I always knew that there was the one out there. And when I saw my twin flame for the first time, I was like, damn, that's the one. That's what I've been waiting for. So it was like a dead giveaway for you? Yeah, it was the feeling as well. Like when I met him, I felt this feeling of like, it's weird to say this. I felt he was my sibling, which is really strange. But if you, if you dug deep into twin flame stuff, some people say that that's because it's your soul recognizing itself. He gave off the vibrational energy of my eldest sister. Hmm. And they've had similar traumas happen to them as children, very interestingly. So, um, yeah, and when he writes to me as well, or when we communicate, especially when he, like, messages me or emails me, his writing just feels exactly like my elder sister. It's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> and so, did you hear of the terminology Twin Flames before you met your Twin Flame? Or was it something? that you started exploring as to why you were in the situation once you had met him so I did know about the term and I know there's people out there saying that oh you can't be a twin flame if you knew about it before you met them 
I I did. Okay, I did. And the reason why I did is because I write, I write, and I I am spiritual, and I'm interested in things, and I research things, and I was I wrote about um, twin flames in my book Bollywood Gay. I wrote about soulmates. But when I wrote about it at the time, I just thought it was like a nice, romantic, loving situation. I don't know it was this crazy stuff. Um, so reading it and then telling people about it is different than experiencing it because it is hellish. And, and at one point, I did think maybe my ex was a twin flame very like briefly because I kept seeing the new numbers like 111 and we kept having like an on and off relationship at times. So I thought, oh, maybe this is a twin flame, but I didn't pay attention to it or care. I didn't care. And I also wasn't looking like, you know, there's some people who go out looking for their twin flame and manifesting and all that stuff. I didn't care. I was happily single after six years and I went to a spiritual retreat in in Rome, Italy, around the Mediterranean. Um, and as I came back, you know, I wasn't there. I was I, don't know, I was single I was sleeping around sometimes I was dating sometimes I was being free I wasn't really bothered about marriage kids I didn't care actually I wasn't that like I wasn't like oh my god I need to find the person I was happy and then my life went upside down <laughs> it's funny how they talk about it all being within the fairy tale and everything is so romantic and hunky-dory till you hit the dark night of the soul but before we get to that you know we were speaking about energy over here and uh, which goes way beyond the physicality that we're born into or that we resonate with, Manny. Do you think that being, or first and foremost, let's begin with how the energy is at play and it doesn't have much to do with the biological coding of a person. Could you tell us a little bit about that? You mean the twin flame energy or being gay? Well, which one? <laughs> well, for you, it's pretty congruated, but I don't know if it helps you on the journey or it takes away from it. And that's you know what's interesting? Yeah. What's interesting? I feel like with me and my twin flame, because we are gay, it's, it's, it's for us for some reason it is slightly easier to integrate the masculine and feminine energies because he would be classified as a divine masculine who's running, but he's very happy wearing feminine clothes at times. He wears masculine clothes and he will wear feminine clothes. Hmm. And for me, I'm the divine feminine in the masculine body. But I've had an issue with femininity from growing up because I used to be bullied, right, uh, at school or by relatives. So for me, if I saw like a, a top, because these days gay guys wear feminine clothes sometimes, like, you know, with slits or whatever they wear, whatever. If I would see that in Zara or some shop, I'd look at it and think, oh, but I can't wear that because I'd get beaten up on the street. Like I've always been like someone who dressed up in military clothes I used to wear military clothing when I was younger like military clothing on the street and I have military hair and all sorts I've gone through phases but it's always been this like tough outset and outlook and um, to protect myself and then also this spiritual side which has been a way of kind of justifying oh even though I'm gay I'm a good person because I believe in God mm -hmm. and um the energy right when we focus on divine masculine, divine feminine, it kind of can stop us from truly experiencing what we are because it puts people into this gender narrative, sex narrative that you're male and female. And lots of people get confused with this. You can say alpha and omega, you can say positive and negative, you can say yin and yang, you can say matrix and spiritual, you could say all sorts. But when you go into deep meditation and you feel the actual energy, it's like um, electrons and protons. It's like... Um, clouds of vibration there's an energy of the feminine which the masculine is kind of like pushing it towards and the feminine energy is kind of like going out the other way right the masculine goes within so it's just like a flow a cosmic flow of energy it's nothing to do with you having masculine traits or feminine traits or it's such yeah i don't even like using that because it confuses people who are non-binary or in between and then some people say you're only one or the other. And then some people say there's a little bit of that in you. And then some people say you've got both within you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's confusing, but and it's I just it's Really energy. interesting because we were having this conversation and I remember bouncing off this experience with you and it resonated when you said that, you know, we have that energy, both of that energy within us. And what comes out is what we generally need to heal and work with, which also talks in terms of the mythological or the mythology of Shiva Shakti, right? 
So when we want to understand twin flames, can you speak a little bit with respect to the mythology behind it and then perhaps get into the metaphysical side of the energy? Yes. So there's different theories, right? You have it in ancient Egypt, you have it in Hinduism, you have it in Greek mythology, um, where the, the you know there's, a, there's two from one, you know, two beings from one soul. But there's so many theories and philosophies, you don't know what to believe and what not to believe. And whether you need to believe it, it doesn't matter, right? Because when you meet your twin flame, it's undeniable. This is a connection. But the one theory is that, you know, we all come from source energy, God, source, whatever you want to call it. And then we all fracture from that. Mm -hmm. And then that one stream where you're at, that is where your maybe oversoul is, which splits into two. And the way I like to understand it a little bit is, I don't know if you've seen Spider-Man multi-universe. There's like two of them, three of them, the same Spider-Man, but it's a different timelines and they're all interacting. It's almost like seeing yourself in another person. That's how it feels like. When I met my twin flame, he would say my spiritual stuff, but in a logical, scientific way. And it's like, like it's weird. It's like hearing yourself. So there's that aspect. And then in Hinduism, you know, there is the aspect that, you know, usually each god has a goddess. And with Shiva, Shakti, Shiva, I don't know as much, maybe you know more because I'm not a Hindu, but I do like try to understand it. But this is what I've been told. I, I interviewed someone that Shiva, you know, was both energies combined and humanity was trying to procreate, but they couldn't procreate because they, they, they were missing the feminine energy, I think, or whatever. And so they were all becoming celibate. So Shiva had to split his energy in within him to masculine and feminine and have that reincarnate and put it into humans so that they could procreate. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that. And with, with Greek mythology, the theory is that there was humans, but they had two arms and two legs and two heads. And then you were split them in half and then you had male and female. I don't know. I don't know what's true. And then I speak to some twin flames in union and they say, you know, we switch polarities. Sometimes I'm the masculine, sometimes she's the feminine and it switches or sometime in different lifetimes where different things. I personally, I have no idea. All I know is I bumped into this person <laughs> and it was really strange. And um, yeah. Why do we need to be attached to, 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 to stories, you know? I think your reality has to be the one that you resonate most with, that your experiences resonate most with. And that becomes your truth. And, uh, you know, but is there something whereby, and I want to get into this and I want to scrape the surface and do all the dirty work with you in another segment where we get into karmics and twin flames and soulmates. But for the sake of simplicity here, when you know that you're dealing with a person and science would give it its own names, right? Uh, could you tell me and touch upon a little bit about the push and pull energy? How does that really work? Like, how do you define yourself as the divine feminine or the divine masculine? Yeah, so the divine feminine would be the push energy, chasing energy, um, in distortion. It's distorted feminine. Distorted feminine is controlling, toxic, uh, wounded, um, fearful needs to grab onto the masculine to make him do what she wants. But the divine feminine is surrendered and allowing and knows that everything is hers anyway. The divine masculine is the pull energy when distorted because he's scared, he's in his ego, he's in his mind. And we say he and she interchangeably, it doesn't mean gender or sex or anything like that. So the question is, how do you know whether you're the divine feminine or the divine masculine energy? Well, usually, so if you think about the divine feminine energy, that's the Shakti energy, right? And that's the energy that when the Kundalini awakens, goes from the root chakra to the crown. And that's where the awakening happens, the serpent, the fire that goes up, that's been activated. So the divine feminine energy is the energy that gives us enlightenment and connects us to the higher realms, the higher chakras. And you could arguably say um, ascended masters like Jesus and Buddha, though they were in their masculine body and they were divine masculine energies, their divine feminine energy was very active. So they utilized the divine feminine energy to connect with the higher realms, with God. It's the upper chakras and, and above. The divine masculine energy is more so rooted in the lower three chakras to do with earth, the matrix, um, to do with sex and protection and creativity, whatever else. It's more to do with 
building the structures and, the, and, and containing and protecting the foundations, whereas the divine feminine is more sort of like connecting with the higher realms and sort of more the inward stuff and the, the, the what goes within the structure that's being protected, the, the safe space within. So they both kind of fit together. And arguably, the twin flames have to learn to kind of like balance both of those energies within ourselves. Because the divine feminine also has to have boundaries. The divine feminine also has to have, uh, her, you know, her masculine within her protecting her from other people. Um, and there will be people who disagree with this because some people say you only one or the other. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not the, you know, the, the, the keeper of the truth of what is what and what is not. Like, I don't know myself. I just say what I have heard or what I feel. And we shouldn't be attached to the fact that this is the truth and the truth will just stay this forever because truth is subjective and dependent upon your perspective perspective and, and your individual journey as well. But usually the divine feminine will awaken first and realize and she will chase and she will figure out about twin flames and, you know, will want to like get with the divine masculine and, you know, want to be with him. And she's love. She's not scared of love. She wants to really go for it. But the divine masculine is scared of love because he's been traumatized by it and he runs and he avoids and he he's the avoidant whereas the the divine feminine is the um the uh, the chaser the uh, the anxious attachment yes <laughs> right so there is an activation process that goes on right yes how does that how does one get activated onto this journey does it have to be a physical union does it can it be maybe on a, on a fee by d level um, yeah, it doesn't have to be physical. I mean, the surest and quickest way to get activated by your twin flame is to have sex with them. Yes. And the divine masculine is very sexual and they will, uh, once you have sex with them, they will ignite your kundalini from your root, especially mm -hmm. with the divine feminine. And then the divine feminine goes through it, but more so consciously and, you know, in a work and whatever else. But the divine masculine's life collapses physically. But not everyone meets their twin flame physically. So... The level of intimacy you have with your twin flame depends upon the amount that you can handle and perhaps how much karma you've dealt with already in other lives. Because some twin flames are with each other for quite a while before they separate and some um, don't even meet. But you can be activated just by their voice, by the way their eyes look at you. You can be activated with 5D. Some twin flames have 5D Kundalini tantric sex. Because um, tantric sex is innate for twin flames. That's how sex is very important for twin flames that's how we heal templates and things but um you don't need to meet your twin flame just how you can have a dream about them or you can see them on the street and it can activate and some twin flames don't get activated straight away it takes them years and years before their body is ready for it but when you have the activation whichever form there is a fire that begins and starts to go up and you start purifying and your life may fall apart and things start to realign for you and you start for the divine feminine it's the obsess obsession and the ego is dissolving that way because it's just a lot of mental energy and it's being purified and cleansed and for the divine masculine it tends to be a lot of down down lower chakra activity where they go towards they feel like a god after they've had sex with the, the divine feminine they feel like a god okay which they normally wouldn't feel like they're very egotistical so that's why they tend to go towards more sex and drugs and karma and they avoid the divine feminine because they feel like they've had their fix of her energy and she's obsessed on them so they get really in their ego so that's how you get activated <laughs> but what happens after that maddie like so for, she comes for the she has awareness that they are one soul and he is not so obviously you're saying it doesn't make sense to tell your twin flame but you have told your twin flame that he's a twin flame right yeah there's um parameters in which you would or wouldn't right now the divine masculine knows from the moment they see the divine feminine the instant they see her they know that she's the one they know it but when they are around the divine feminine in the bubble phase, that's when the triggers start and all their unprocessed trauma comes to the surface. And the divine masculine has been very good at hiding and shoving that down from their background and childhood and then putting up an egotistical front, pretending from the insecurities that they are, you know, God incarnate on earth. They have huge egos. 
um, in order to cope. Um, and so when they basically get activated, they run because of all the trauma is coming up. So they want to go back into that old lifestyle and carry on, but they can't for long. Now, the divine feminine, when she gets activated, she gets obsessed and she's like focused on them. She figures out she's twin flames. And that label is only effective and will take you so far to be able to understand. But you've got to transcend that. Now, when do you tell the divine masculine? If you tell the divine masculine whilst they are running and they don't care, because usually they're not spiritual, they're very logical brain. And you tell them something. And often the divine feminine, like I did, I told my twin flame because I wanted to manipulate him. I wanted to control him from my distortion and say to him, look, you are never going to escape because we will be in union. And this is what we are. And they don't care. That scares the living daylights. And it scared my twin flame. He was like, leave me alone. The only time you should perhaps tell them is when they are open and receptive and they, they speak to you and they say, I feel a connection. And then you may be able to guide them in a way so that they are not left in the dark because often they're confused. Their life's falling apart. They can't stop thinking about you. They do think about you. But when you are obsessively thinking about them, they feel repulsed because it's like all this mental, like it's like speakerphone energy and mental energy. And they, you're like tormenting them. And the thoughts of you bring, bring out their triggers. So they have an association, mental association that you are pain because it activates their pain body. So why would they want to be around someone who gives them pain? They go for an easier option. Someone looks like you, but doesn't act like you. <laughs> so how do they really come back and do they come back they always come back and they come back when the divine feminine has does have a difficult task they do have a difficult task i mean the divine masculine suffer a lot they have to because their ego needs to be broken but the divine feminine is a conscious twin so she will find figure out that she's you know a twin flame blah 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 and she he whatever it doesn't matter and um once you calm that energy, because you talked about the energy, it's like the polar opposites, right? It's the, the magnets. Two positives, they repel. You need to be in the right uh, polarity to be able to bring them back. So for the divine feminine, it's being in a surrendered state of faith and allowing, where basically you focused your energy and brought it back from fear and ego, mind, into soul, love, and peace. So you, the, in the beginning, you're very obsessed and the energy is very cataclysmic and atomic. You have to bring it into the now. It's called zero, zero point, which is in the present, neither positive, neither negative. The polarity has to be in the middle. It's, um, it's Jedi mindset, zero point, groundedness in, in, the, in, the, in the middle path, like Buddha says, in peace, equanimity. And when the tw twin flame returns, you have to maintain that because if you start pushing again, they run. So it's a constant practice of being in the present, in the now. That's where in the now you have no attachment, no expectation, no um, desire, really, because you have everything in the absolute present moment. Jedi mindset, energy balanced, surrendered, protected with your own divine masculine. When you look at the at the universe and the nature around you, you feel oneness with it all and you feel no emptiness you don't feel lack the only time you feel lack is when you're not in the now and you're thinking about the future and the present i need a man i need to have children he did this to me what about when he went off with another woman i'm so angry i'm so mad he needs to get me a ring he needs to that's all mind and when you're in the mind yeah it's yeah. push mm -hmm. so what and you're saying essentially and simply is that even if you're ignoring your masculine in the 3D, so to speak, and you're playing hard to get, but if you're still obsessing over them, it's the end. So, Mary, let's just come back on Earth and talk a little bit about the 3D experience. Uh, I want to know that since we're speaking about energy, let's say there is a divine feminine, right? And she plays by the human rules of staying in no contact and not sort of uh, responding to the texts or, you know, sort of giving a hard... Uh, Mind games, poultry, playing games. Right? Manipulating, right? Uh, does that work in the twin flame journey? 
the twin flame journey is an energetic journey and people say oh how will he know if he's blocked me or he doesn't have my number the divine masculine feels it right so if you play manipulation mind games and tricks soulmate sort of patterns it doesn't work it's all to do with energy and the magnetic force of the polarities and it, they come back in or they are repelled so you cannot do a mental exercise and pretend no it doesn't so work. there's no fooling the universe no fooling the energy unfortunately no <laughs> as hard as that but where are you on your journey right now i'm in the place of headache <laughs> not heartache headache <laughs> i like the way you say sardardi yeah yeah sardardi um where I'm at, I, I want to less focus on uh, my twin flame, I guess. I'm focused more on me now. I surrendered more, getting more and more into that. Um, getting out of the post-traumatic stress I've been put through. <laughs> and uh, moving my content on social media from purpose to now moving on to ascension. The next part I'm going to move on to is ascension and less twin flamey stuff. Because we need to start remembering what the true journey is. So I'm more at the point where... Um, I'm just so annoyed with other things that are going on with my twin flame, but there is improvements. There's so many improvements that are going on, but they're still backwards and forwards with the ego and the matrix with him. So I'm just learning to be more within myself. You know, I'm not, I have no interest in dating or sleeping with other people or um, putting energy outside. I'm just putting it all inside with me. And even with the twin flame, it's very important. Even when they return, it's just focus on you because as soon as you start focusing on them, it's game over right so it's it's true you can't really fool the universe but does the universe validate that journey for you and your progress yes so as you um continue to purify yourself and feel good because a lot of divine feminines they say oh my life fell apart and when i was um you know obsessing like i've lost my job money and everything falls apart but that's because you're leaking your energy when you bring it back to yourself and you start to really be in that place of love surrendered state everything works out money uh, jobs client family friends you know all the things in your life just work so beautifully and in contrast the divine masculine who's running and doing sabotaging behavior they are being blasted and tower moments and ego deaths and their life is falling apart because they're going they're going towards the ego and you start to go towards the divine love right as you take the journey towards divine love towards god or the universe everything will work just like clockwork so yeah my life is great like otherwise my life is fantastic right and we had we had this conversation about surrender as well you know but uh, not slipping out of that right now I wanted to know that there are these typical stages that are referred to in almost every podcast that I've heard and every youtuber has spoken about certain stages uh, are they like a linear way that you approach your growth in your spiritual journey or is it pretty much you know, like ghoom pirke, you keep coming back the minute, you know, there, there needs to be more cleansing that happens. There is revisitations. And also you have to remember that when the divine masculine returns, you can go back into chasing energy and obsession energy. Because in each moment, you have to like in each moment, you know, you could be triggered or you could go back into being angry or annoyed because even with healing, right? I made videos and people really got rattled by it where I says you don't actually need any healing or anything because you actually are already whole and complete. Like in the present, in the now, everything is there for you, right? Because that, that's when you're connected with your 5D self. It's just the 3D that thinks that, you know, you're separate or you are wounded. But if you go in the now, in the present where you don't need anything, you already have everything. So it's about remaining in that state. You can have as many healings, as many plant medicine, retreats, ayahuasca, whatever you're going to do, you can do all the things, you can spend 100 billion pounds on this. But if you are not able to sustain it in each moment, if you go back into ego, not into soul, then your twin flame runs again. So it is more so just being in the present, being in the now, being in zero point, being in surrender. Yeah. And you know, Manny, it's really surprising that uh, for a lot of us, initially, when we get onto the spiritual journey, and this not doesn't necessarily have to do a lot with the twin flame journey. You start to imagine your goal as just transcending beyond the 3D and living on the 5D plane. And then is as you progress, you start to learn that if you're going to continuously stay in the 5D realm, you're escaping the very the very pattern and the reason for which you chose to come and experience your earthly journey, right? And so then I began to 
you know, put my thoughts to this and well, experiences led the way, of course. And I only realized a lot later that you it's very easy to do that. And whether you escape with the help of drugs or alcohol or you meditate, that's also a form of just running away from what you don't want to face in your 3D life. But what's really fascinating is that if we are talking in terms of connecting with ourselves, you go into that soul energy. And with the help of your soul guiding you, you sort of co-create with your 3D space to bring in that balance. Right? So it's like this amazing interplay. It is interesting. We wouldn't be born as twin flames if we were meant to be monks and nuns, right? We've chose a householder life because we've come in pairs. And twin flame energy, it's not like some people say, oh, my friend or my cat is a twin flame or whatever. No, with a twin flame, it's sexual energy, it's kundalini, and you're meant to have sex, okay? Because you that's how you heal. That's how you heal the templates and the programming. You bring the hero scamos, divine energy on earth. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been born as twin flames. We would have been born as a regular person, and we could have just gone in the monk in the jungle and become a nun or a monk. Yeah. So it, you have to learn. And that's why the divine masculine often sexualizes us or often grounds us or mocks us as well. If we become too much into our spirituality, they'll be like, they'll mock spirituality because they're trying to shake you into the 3D. They are the anchor system to pull you down. They always, you get into the heart space or go too high into spirituality, you'll get to a point where you might become so like, uh, um, you, you, your soul's going to leave the, the earth plane and you're going to go into the non-physical or you want to be one with God or you might even kill yourself or, or commit, commit suicide or whatever. And the divine masculine will bring you back sexually with the energy. Because a lot of twin flames, the, the divine flames are, I feel his sexual energy. It's all over me today. And it's because he's bring, he's grounding you. So that's how you, they do it for you naturally. <laughs> but do you ever rise from that? And it sounds a lot like the Kundalini energy as well, right? Isn't that what's essentially happening? It is. And you're bringing it into the heart space. You're bringing them up to the heart and you're, they're bringing you down to the heart. So yes, it is important to, um, but what is the 3D and the 5D anyway? Like, you know, people think about it in all sorts of different ways. So the earth exists in many different parallel realities and dimensions, okay? So there's an earth in 3D, 4D, 5D. 4D is more of a bridge space. So it is literally a vibrational space of unconditional love. Staying in a state of unconditional love in each moment. That's 5D, right? And you do that in the physical realm. Otherwise, you'll be dead. So how can you basically go into 5D when you are physically 3D? It's about the energy of 5D of unconditional love, but anchoring that in your physical reality. Yeah. yeah, it's it's fascinating. It's so amazing because you get tagged. When you're supposed to be spiritual, you can't be partying. You can't really be taking care of your physical body. Oh, this is good. Let's and talk it, about it. It's, it's insane, you know. I didn't want to get into a controversial topic, but, you know, there's no soft landing when it comes to this conversation. And it's, you can't take care of yourself. You can't be doing things the way that you should be doing sexuality. You shouldn't have money. Yeah. You shouldn't have money. Yeah. yeah. Any of that is all the lower chakra work and it shouldn't be happening. But how are you supposed to work on your spiritual journey, not understanding that your physical body is the perfect conduit for all of that to happen? And if you're not going to respect that, how is it even going to hold that journey? Hold that you know what's interesting? A lot of divine feminines, are triggered or repulsed by their divine masculine's 3D lifestyle, right? He's sleeping, drinking, sex, parties, blah, 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 blah. Because you, as a divine feminine, have gone too far in the other opposite direction. And you need to be balanced in the middle. So they purposely go the other way. They are forced by the divine, right? So when I was wearing all the shawls and all that kind of stuff, my twin flame's taking his clothes off. Because <laughs> they don't want you to become a nun or go too much into that lifestyle. And then some people say, oh, as a twin flame coach, you shouldn't charge money. You should be like living yeah. in the Himalayas. And it's like, no, we choose a householder life. And it's um, you know important to kind of also bring spirituality or love or whatever it is in day-to-day -day life. Twin flames are meant to bring unconditional life in daily situations, in every place we go, help others, inspire them through our energy. We will trigger people with our light. We will inspire people with our light. Some people will like be disgusted by us and run and some people will come and talk to us because wherever we go, we're meant to be bringing and sowing the seeds of that light. That, because we, we, 
as we purify, we allow photonic light to come from above and it just fills into our cells and, and our systems and that vibrates out. And that's why the divine masculine has to be in union with us because the divine feminine becomes really full of light and she needs that protection because you will, a lot of people will come up to you and either try to like take from you or to like be around you. So um, you have to live amongst people. You have to go out and enjoy and it is the lower chakra stuff like the divine masculine loves the dancing and the working out and the physical we I, i've done posts um, i did posts where i was half naked and topless because my, i'm trying to get over my sexual shame and physical shame which my twin flame is very comfortable with and people unfollowed me because they're like you're supposed to be spiritual you can't show your abs or whatever and it's like no we have to bring spirituality into daily life and we have to balance ourselves so that we are not judging people you know, the thing about sexuality, and it's not something I wanted to discuss in this segment because it can be pretty much, it can be taken out of context. But, uh, you know, people start to think that, oh, you know, one is a saint or a sage and has given up the physical part of wanting to get into sexuality. And that's when I started thinking about our conversation about the heroes gamos, right? And the orgasm that happens at the crown chakra. So, and that's a reality check. That's where it tells you that, you know, it's not just about the physical sex, but it, it's a very important trigger. It's like a teaser. And that's the language that you understand. You know, we've ended it's in fine. the areas. There's a lot of distortions on earth in all different templates and sex is one of them, but it's the divine template that you want to embody and sacredness of it. And the thing is, someone who is... um very very spiritual and denies their physical aspects can be very dangerous and you see a lot of that in the news so and so baba so and so guru so and so spiritual person has molested this person or yep. boys or girls or raped people because they are suppressing we cannot suppress we have to express but in divinity and in balance yeah but that comes down to balancing your hara and your you know your lower chakras as well and that's where the divine masculine starts to work and trigger you so that you can ascend so it's all really fascinating and i also feel that because we've entered the age of aquarius every it's like we've got a fast pace a fast pass to the entire journey you know you're seeing a lot of light workers come together you're seeing all of this interaction happening on social media there's more awareness people are more open to the awareness uh but there is always going to be another side to it where the medical science comes in as well right and when we talk in terms of certain traits and you're describing the divine masculine, people start talking about toxicity. They start talking about narcissistic personality disorder, right? Uh, how far do you go before you realize that you don't want to be accepting this energy, right? Should you be accepting abuse in the name of, well, perhaps I'm in a twin flame journey? No. And uh, <laughs> I'm quite direct with that. I mean, that reminds me of some of my videos where I say something, I say, no, I say the answer straight away. But different people say different things. Some people say, oh, your twin flame could never be a narcissist. And, da, 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 and that's not a twin flame. The thing is, we all carry characteristics of narcissism and we all carry characteristics of this and that and the other when we are in our ego. And it can be like a protection mechanism. The way you know in which it's a twin flame is because you cannot hate them. After like, you might be feeling really angry and annoyed, but after a day, usually a night, you, you, you feel the unconditional love and you also feel the purging within you. You feel like you've let go of a layer of anger and then you see it reflected in your twin flame somewhat. Sometimes it takes a while, but basically you start to see yourself feeling happier and more purified with a karmic or a true narcissist you won't feel good afterwards. And if it was a true narcissist, they wouldn't leave you alone, okay? A true narcissist will come in, love bomb you, take from you, and then go away. And then they'll come back in, take from you, and go away. But a twin flame divine masculine doesn't do that. They run away to protect you because they know their life is mad and their life is not good. And they want to put it together and then return. So mm -hmm. they don't breadcrumb and take and then go. But if they're doing that, it's not a twin flame. Then it's a karmic, right? It's not a true narcissist. The twin flame divine masculine is showing and mirroring your, your own inner narcissism, your own inner self-ego infatuation. But with a twin flame, 
you will always go into deeper layers of love and you will um, purge and feel your life will just become better. Yeah. But you can't take away from the fact that if you could ask for a refund, like you said, you would, right? Because but at the moment, yeah. There's nothing <laughs> built and about this whole situation. But people who are in union, and I know quite a few people who are in union and been in union for quite a while, they say it's worth it. They say the entire journey is orchestrated to a T. You know, your higher selves have been working towards it. You can't, you wouldn't change it for anything. And once you get to the top of the mountain and you're both together in peace, in bliss, doing your purpose, living your life, it's worth it. It is worth it when you get there. Yeah, but then how do you sustain it? Are you still supposed to balance out the energy every time? Or so it's easier because you've purified a lot of yourself, right? A lot of your consciousness, you've removed all the layers. It's, it's interesting because with regular people, if someone is doing something that's not good behavior, toxic behavior, and they keep doing it, people would say you're going to you're gonna become a habit of it. It becomes manifest, right? You keep doing it, it becomes your reality, like alcoholism or weed or drugs or sex or whatever. The more you do it, the more you become it. But with Twin Flames, it's not like that. With Twin Flames, it's called like it's called empty your cup. So you've got a cup. Yeah. I've got this much amount of toxicity. As I empty, empty, empty like the divine masculine, eventually there's an end. Eventually they come to a point, I don't want to have sex no more. I don't want to have drugs no more. I don't want to be narcissistic no more. I don't want to be my ego no more. Because you empty your ancestral lineage, your karmic past patterns. They empty. There comes a final point. And then when you come into union, all you have to all you have to do is ensure you don't go back into mind and, and judgment and triggers. You stay in the heart. Yeah. But a lot of that past toxicity has been expulsed. It doesn't return. That it, it empties, it finishes. And the same for the feminine. She has her own stuff as well. So yeah, we all have to be balanced. But this was just great. I knew this was going to be a never-ending conversation, and I think we can still go on about it for days. But thank you so much, Manny, for joining us today and giving us at least a start of the introduction. And I know we started to get on to some dirty stuff and some interesting stuff and controversial stuff with respect to you know the Kundalini, the sexuality. But uh, listen, we have to remove this the dirty shame we have towards sex, you know, it's it's fine. But we need to first understand and resonate with how we have been preconditioned to believing yeah. uh, all of that, because I always feel, feel like we get onto a journey where we say we've got to learn certain things without realizing that, you know, the first step to any learning is unlearning a lot of BS. Right. Yeah. I'm not I'm not sure I'm allowed to cuss on this uh, particular platform. So we'll just leave it for that. But any final thoughts that you have in around the twin flame journey? You know, I mean, I know you were gobsmacked because you heard it was, you know, trending on dating apps with respect to finding one there. So do you have any final thoughts with respect to leaving this on a bit of a humor? You know, it's funny, like some people message me and they're like, do you believe in twin flames? And I'm like, listen, I make thousands of videos. Like, what do you think? <laughs> and they're like, have you met? Are you a twin? Like, oh, oh my God, the sort of stuff that comes out of people's mouths. Um, I mean, we're on this journey and you're on it. You're on it. And you might as well go for it. Right. You're on the ride. What? Stay until it finishes. Yeah. Experience it. Enjoy it. Learn to like kind of focus on yourself, self love, and appreciate and, and do things like don't just sit at home focusing on this situation. Work out, see friends, go on holiday, live your life, and know that there are people out there who can support you. And we're here, you can communicate and talk to each other and um, make light of it, you know, don't take it too seriously. Like, when you see things that your twin flame is doing, just be like, okay, you know what? You need to do that. Get out of your system and just keep focusing on yourself. Bring it back to yourself. It is it is not easy. It's not. But um, we can make it easier for ourselves. So you practically have to get off that stage and become a spectator. And once in a while, think of your movie playing out as not just a horror movie, but also something which is really funny and humorous. Indeed, I watch all, nearly all my videos and I laugh. I yeah. find my videos funny. I don't know if other people find them funny because it's almost like I'm talking to my twin flame and I, <laughs> I'm having these like stories or I don't know, poems or what I'm saying. I find it funny. I find the whole thing funny. I really do. And then also this whole thing about you get people to say twin flame is this and this is the mythology and this is that. And this is a science. And 
people get really stuck in like their ego as well with that like yeah. out of your ego it is everything is whatever it is it is what it is it is what it is yeah but it's also you know what happens Manny is that more or less we get triggered uh by other people it's not just our twin flame that's triggering us right so every time we're hearing things like that and I know we have a lot to discuss, but we should wrap this up. And it was so great. And is it raining in London? I guess it's a fair ask. No. And I'm not in London, by the way. I'm in and, Birmingham. But it's not raining. It's quite cloudy. And surprisingly, today we have a sunny day as well. And I'm in Seattle. So not too bad. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. you well lovely enjoy. talking to you. Yes, likewise. And thank you for being here. And I think this was fun, funny. And uh, we did get some controversial topics. Well, at least we started to scrape the surface with it and we'll take it forward. But we have to come back for another segment where I'm more technologically savvy. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank take you so care. much. Take care. Have a great day.